Good morning, good morning, everybody. I hope you guys are all doing well. I am looking a bit like a drowned rat at the moment, but you know, you have this. Uh, this morning was a scurry session, but I am here and hopefully I can pull this all off. We've got good topics today. For those of you that are new to Treyer Wilderness, my name is Tammy Treyer. And my family and I live 100% off grid in Northern Idaho. We've been doing this for a decade and uh, we enjoy sharing our faith-led preparedness, homesteading, off-grid lifestyle with the world, helping educate on um, a barrage of different things and also uh, sharing God through the journey. Uh, he leads the way in our family and that's important to us. So hopefully it is important to you as well. Um, if you are not uh, a believer, that doesn't mean you need to leave, so don't go exiting left. Uh, we have a lot of educational things to share, and we would love to have you be a part of things as well. So um, it's just that we, we lead by faith, and that's how we roll. So hopefully you enjoy everything. Today I want to talk about growing your own food and the importance of things. Before I jump into that, I want to mention, for those of you that are joining on um, YouTube, I wanted to let you know that Facebook has been being very unkind. I am only able to record um, in, in a vertical positioning versus the landscape, so I've been having to edit my videos pretty weird. So I'm really close up in the videos on YouTube, so I'm really sorry about that. Um, I feel like I'm invading everybody's space. Um, also, one of the videos that I did, um, I think it was two weeks ago, I am not able to download and I did not download it on my phone. That wasn't something I was normally doing because I could do it from the desktop. However, I can't download it, therefore I cannot share it right now on YouTube. So there'll probably be an out of sequence video on YouTube later, uh, given that Facebook might actually get their uh, problems sorted out can't give Facebook too much grief. It's a free program, so I guess it is what it is. But if things continue this way, I might decide to start doing lives on YouTube rather than on Facebook. So just keep that all in mind. I see you all joining me. Wonderful, wonderful. Good morning, Courtney. Good morning, Chad and Gina. Uh, good morning, Tammy. Diana says, good morning. I'm at lunch right now and only stay for a little while. That's okay. I can only be on here a little while this morning. Good morning, Miss Shelley. Yeah, so bear with me. I'm probably going to do a fast and furious here um, because I actually have an appointment as well that I have to get out of here for. So I'm just going to dive right in. Right now, this time of year is a really important year to consider gardening. And um, I'm going to dive into that in a second. That's the second attempt now. I want to jump back to something else real quick. Um, forgive my scattered brain this morning. Lots is going on here behind the scenes and it's just been crazy. But we've got a lot of praises to um, celebrate today and we have a huge amount of extremely important prayer requests. Every prayer request is important, um, but we there are so many people that are dealing with some um, really unfortunate circumstances, and I want to really draw attention to our prayer list today. Um, good morning, Anita. But before I go into the prayer list, we need to praise. It's always important to praise when we are going through, um, whether we're going through rough times or good times, and even more so in the rough times, we need to praise because we need to see the good even in the rough patches. And um, I've been sharing with you about my friend Pat and Mark. You've heard me talking about Pat for years. I love that man dearly. He is like my, my father. I just, I love him. He's such a special man. And his son-in-law Mark is no different. They are really good Christian men. And um, not only talk the talk, but they walk the walk and um, really have great trust and faith in God and an amazing outlook on life. Mark has been dealing with uh, stem cell replacement and chemo. Um, he has multiple myeloma as well as Pat. It's an incurable cancer. He was in Seattle from, I think, the end of September um, till January, um, going through the stem cell uh, procedures. And this week, they did some testing to see where his cancer was at. And it is gone. 
like no longer like hit the road and is just amazing. It is an incurable cancer. So this is a huge, huge major praise. Uh, I mean, like I have told you guys many times before, God is in control and God does incredibly amazing things. And we have seen miracle after miracle with the prayer requests alone that we have in our small little community. So it's pretty amazing. And I wanted to share that this morning right off because that is just such an incredible blessing. And I'm so excited for Mark. Um, Mark still needs prayers. His spine and his uh, skeletal system are really, really weak and brittle because the cancer had been attacking his bones. Um, so he has a metal cage on the inside holding him together and he has to wear a brace. Uh, so he needs definite prayer there for continued healing there. And uh, God surely delivered him. That's just amazing stuff. Good morning, Miss Rachel. Miss Rachel just returned from an amazing trip. I can't even begin to imagine how you are floating in the clouds right now. Um, good morning, Miss Kelly. And good morning, Jill. We need to pray for Kelly and Courtney today. Kelly, um, Courtney has an MRI today, and uh, we need to pray for God's healing hand there, that there is no tumor left, and uh, that she has a good experience, and um, I could use your prayers today too for my appointment as well. Um, pray for Chad, for his travel mercies, and for God's amazing hand on, on his current adventure, and uh, we also have some other prayers here that I definitely want to call out. And if you need prayer yourself, please don't hesitate to leave it in the comments below. We have an amazing prayerful community here. And if it's personal and you don't want to share the details, just share that you need prayer. If you want to private message me or email me, feel free. You can email me at prayers at treyerwilderness.com. But we also need to pray for Tracy, Cruz, Delilah, and Joshua. Uh, Tracy uh, found out that she has uh, cancer and really needs some heavy prayers there. Um, Dianus Craig could use some prayers. He is experiencing some uh, medical issues and we need to pray for them and uh, continue to pray for Greg and his family. He is another walking miracle, um, was debilitated from cancer pressing on his brain and is now improving rapidly and giving God all the glory for that. So there are a lot of others on the prayer list. Continue to pray for Terry and June. And uh, please lift those on the prayer list um, when you're praying, when they come to mind. Um, even if you pray for them as a whole, we have an amazing group of people and we have seen miracles through our prayers. Also keep the mountain man in your prayers. He has been working a grueling job and is just exhausted and uh, needs renewal. So if you could just lift him for that as well, I would so appreciate it. Good morning, Miss Millie. So now that I saw Millie, I have a couple books I want to uh, give a shout out to. You definitely want to go to Millie's um, page on Amazon. Lots of new things are going to be popping up there. I'm so excited for her. Um, you can go to treyerwilderness.com slash Millie Copper. Um, I've been mentioning her books all, all pretty much through the year. Um, they are a cozy, apocalyptic, Christian-based book, and they are just phenomenal. They really give you a lot of food for thought, and if you're new to preparedness, um, it is definitely a great avenue to um, take to get your mind heading in the right direction for things and reasons that you need to be prepared the other book that I wanted to mention also is my um, friend Kat Ellis put out her book on the coronavirus. And you can go to treyerwilderness.com slash coronavirus. Oh, I have to mention this. This just cracks me up. You see so many memes and, and things going up on the internet and you're hearing all the news about how toilet paper is disappearing. I had a shopping cart full of things that I was stocking up on on Amazon and my toilet paper was removed out of my shopping cart. I don't like to shop, so I like Amazon. It's free shipping. And the UPS guy just gets a kick out of it. Anyway, the toilet paper was removed and is not going to be available till the end of April. For real. So now, let's put this all in perspective. You've got 10,000 rolls of toilet paper and no food. 
you have no use for your toilet paper soon. We need to, people, people aren't processing this. Diana, oh, she says, hi, Millie. Thanks for all the teaching that your books give along with the great stories. Absolutely. Millie's books are addicting and dangerous. If you start them, you need to be prepared to continue reading. But I love them. I absolutely love them. And I love a book like that that draws you in, shares a good story, paints a picture. You feel like you know every character. It's really amazing. But the food for thought that you gain from her books is really, I think it's a great place to start. Most people don't think out of the box in every aspect, and that's where we, we hurt ourselves. Where when you start thinking in a preparedness mindset on every aspect of your life, it's just it just becomes a habit. Rachel says, hey, if you lived in India, you'd probably use your left hand or a hose to clean up. <laughs> ah, that's great. Exactly. Or here, you could use the mullen alongside the lane. It's soft. This time of year, it wouldn't feel very nice, though, mind you. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm sure. It looked like you got quite, you know, um, an eye-opener over there. Um, you know, we are blessed to be able to live the way we do. Oh, Rachel says they did take toilet paper with us, <laughs> just in case. A good, a good fleece rag works probably really good, too. That's just funny. But it's true, though, and we, we need to be really appreciative of the life we are able to live, for sure. Um, I think everybody should experience something like that, Rachel. It just gives people perspective and may change, you know, how we think and, and also how we live. Uh, but the, what was really cool seeing your pictures were all the smiling faces, regardless how they live. She shared a picture. She was in India and she shared a picture of um, a little girl that lives in a dump town where they basically are living off of what they can find in the dump. And she had the most beautiful smile and was just such a precious, happy little thing. You know, it's we, we are spoiled. Our society is spoiled and and messed up in a lot of ways. So I'm sure that that was really awesome. I gained a lot just by looking at your pictures, Rachel. So let's jump, jump into gardening. I'm excited about the gardening aspect this year because I can partake in it uh, to some degree. Things keep shifting a little bit here, as always. They're always going to. And um, it's important that we prepare and think about these things and also utilize our time this year at this time of year to be able to plan whether it's planting in pots or whether it's planting in the soil um, what we are planning um, Rachel said it's hard to deal with what we think is important here it can only be experienced amazing thing to go and see and be there I'm sure I'm sure and like I said you know if more people did um, mission trips and even just local mission efforts, um, I think there'd be a lot more love and respect and um, a different way of living in our country if we experience more of that. I enjoy this time of year because I am able to plan my gardening efforts. When I'm stuck in the house because of bad weather and rain, I'm able to utilize that time to plan and prepare. Now, how many of you are new to the prospect of gardening? I know many of you on here are avid gardeners or have delved into gardening over the last couple of years. Um, but it is, it is one of our greatest resources at our fingertips is the knowledge that we gain while we're gardening. You know, every year brings on new um, opportunities, new uh, learning opportunities as well when we get bugs and different things or our soil needs addressed. And growing our own food is, I feel, one of the most important things we can do because we know where our food is coming from, we have control over it, and um, there's so much gained from being in a garden, our, our mental health, our physical health, and, and then all the produce that we can put up and, and be able to utilize through the winter months. Um, Kelly says, with spring-like weather, it's hard not to get too anxious, but do have our seeds started, cabbage, broccoli, sunflowers, 
Blue wheat and many herbs are already up waiting on tomatoes and peppers. That's awesome. And for many of you, some of you back east I know are joining me, and you probably are experiencing spring. We are still in winter. I still have snow. I don't know if you can see that or not out my dirty window, but we still have snow out there, two feet at spots. So, and our, our winter's not over yet. Uh, our first winter here, or first year here, um, we had... We had snow the first week in July, so you never know what's around the corner. So it is, it can be iffy to start things um, out here in the Pacific Northwest. However, you can use hoops and different types of cover to enable your seeds to start naturally in the ground, um, which is what I would love to be able to do, but that's not an option right now. So I'm just gonna have to see how things go. Diana says, we'll be doing all we can at our rental, talking about approaching our landlord about having a few chickens. We have our small chicken coop with us. Awesome. You know, being able to do things um, as you can, um, even in little bits and pieces, baby steps are a great way to start if you're new to things. Um, as with Diana and I, we've been shuffling and with my health, I couldn't be in the garden. I'm not sure how that's going to go this year either because I have to be very careful with mold. So, you know, there's challenges. There's always challenges. I want to mention um, Melissa's book, the uh, family garden plan once again and you can find that by going to uh, treyerwilderness.com slash family garden plan the link is down below as uh, for the other books that I mentioned um, I really really like Melissa's book I think this is a book that should be in everybody's arsenal of physical books because this takes you from the soup to nuts and it explains everything it breaks it down to serving size um, Give me one second here. I need to respond to a message. It just came across my screen. Sorry. Like I said, there's a lot going on today, so it's kind of like, ah! <laughs> but I'm here. Sorry. So what are your favorite vegetables? Tell me what your favorite vegetables are and what you intend to grow this year. Okay, that's done, sorry. All right, um, let me see. Ooh, you guys are messaging. Tammy says, I was all, oops, I was ready, all ready for gardening because we had such a mild winter. We have, ah, we have snow dew. On Friday, I know, so do we. Six to 12 inches in your neck of the woods. I had two when I was pouting. I'm hoping it changes. Yeah, I'm not, I'm, this is funny. I love the snow, but there has been so much mud and rain that it's just kind of, I'm ready. I'm ready for spring, plus, plus our spring holds a lot of new adventures. So I guess maybe that's part of it too. Um, Kelly says, walking onions and garlic up in the garden under malt need to trim the fruit trees and cut back the raspberries and blackberry plants, old canes. Awesome. Shelly says, I was hoping to get out in the afternoon to do some weeding and start prepping my three raised beds, hoping to get to Sun's new property to help them set up their garden. They moved there at the end of October. I know I'm excited for them. They'll have a nice new season there. Um, Diana says, I have to go. Have a great day, everyone. Love you, girl. Have a good day, too. Robin says, herbs, sprouts, microgreens in my apartment windows. Awesome. How are your migraines, my dear friend? We've been praying for you. Um, Kelly says, love cabbage, kale, varieties of lettuce and spinach, chard, fresh onions and coops. Yes, I, have, I love my cabbage and my kale and that too. I'm excited to get that going. Um, and I want to get red beets too. Ah, uh, let's see here. Beans and peas and tomatoes, mostly going to focus on herbs this year, I think. Have, we have a chance of snow this weekend also. Might wait a little longer. Yes. Thanks for the reminder on the walking onions, Jill says. Yep, see, we're feeding each other. This is good. So with Melissa's book, this goes from starting your seeds to knowing how much to plant to produce enough for your family based on servings. And um, just to have that as a starter is such a fabulous, fabulous thing. I just, I love this book. And then it takes you through 
um, the growing and, and um, every aspect. Melissa is very thorough when she does something. And what's also awesome is right now she has an organic, um, she has an organic uh, gardening workshop going on right now that you can sign up for. It is free. So if you are new to gardening, she gives you lots of tips and ideas and it is jam-packed. So you can find that by going to treyerwilderness.com slash organic gardening workshop. The link is down below. Um, Robin says, today gone. First day is in many weeks. Thank you. Praise God. I know how that feels. I know that chronic feeling of just not feeling well is not a pleasantry. And when it's in your head, it's just awful. Okay. Sorry. This is going to be a wild and wooly ride today. So definitely consider picking this up. Add it to your list. Um, she's got extra bonuses with this as well. But of all the gardening books I've seen, I like this because it just has everything under one roof. And like I said, she's really thorough. Her class, which is free, is going to be extremely thorough also. So the two together will really be a good um, resource for you guys. So I wanted to mention that today and I wanted to talk about it. Um, Kelly says we're growing dried beans this year, four to five varieties don't need garden beans well stocked in the pantry for two years. That's awesome. We rotate what we plant from year to year. Also planting heritage wheat, Hollis oats, cereal rye, and upland rice. Yeah, you guys are incredible. That's just fabulous. That is just so fabulous. And rotating things really helps give the nutrients to the soil um, back. It also enables it to help uh, feed the uh, new plants that uh, you're planting in there. Crop rotation as well as um, partner planning. I know that's not the, the exact term, but that's what came to mind. But um, being able to also incorporate permaculture into things. I know Miss Millie was uh, involved in a lot of that as well, and I think some of you ladies are as well. Um, being able to plant things under your fruit trees to enable um, the companion planting and to uh, really add nutrients to each other and complement each other in uh, different environments. Um, <laughs> I was just going to say that. Tammy, I'll have comfrey and other medicinal herbs we'll share. I actually have comfrey right here in my living room. This is kind of funny. I don't know if you guys can see that, but I have Tammy gave me some horseradish. I have my spearmint tea in the middle pot and a comfrey start there in the uh, underneath there. So hopefully you can see that. Um, I also have another spearmint tea. Being that we didn't know how things were going to roll, when things were going to sell, we wanted to make sure we had some of our plants to transplant. And um, comfrey is a great soil booster. Um, comfrey is great for so many things. Um, you can also use comfrey to make your... Um, composting teas as well. So I, I love having my comfrey and it just takes off. It takes off in a huge, huge way. So it's pretty, it's a pretty good plant, stable plant. And, um, the, the utilization of that plant is tremendous. Uh, the medicinal purpose of comfrey is fabulous. Um, yes, medicinal herbs are a real key thing. If you don't have access to them in the wild or you aren't familiar with identifying them properly, planting them is a great um, resource and way to make sure you, you have the right item, the right herb, and also learning how to use it properly is important as well. Um, I have a great asparagus patch that has taken off here. Um, I planted it probably our second year here, and it is just it's getting huge. So I'm real excited for the next people taking this over that they'll have a uh, really nice, fresh uh, asparagus. That can be a hard one to get started. So my, my medicinal beds, um, I have kept going even through the last couple years in just having a couple things going in there. I had my bees in the garden. That's another great um, thing to have. You have pollinators. 
Um, you also have them, I have them right by my, my herbal garden so that um, my honey is being medicinally fed. Um, we also have a lot of fireweed out here, which makes the honey just amazing. And I say that loosely because when we first moved here, there was a lot of fireweed right around us. And I'm not seeing as much, but um, I love fireweed. Um, it's, you can actually eat fireweed. We've done that on our camping trips. And um, it just it makes a very crystal clear honey if that is one of the main things they're feeding on. Courtney and I have been shelling beans in the evenings, have good supply of light kidney Calypso, that's a black and white, okay, and uh, Stollard's red, white, small red and white bean, black-eyed peas, and pintos we grew two years ago and didn't have time to shell until now. That's awesome. She shared with me that you guys were doing that. That's cool, and that's a fun thing to do. You know, it's monotonous, but it's a relaxing monotonous, and um, having those beans on hand is just awesome because right now that's one of the things that I'm stocking up on is organic dried beans so that we have plenty of beans and um, my rices and flour. So being able to stock up on those things is great, but being able to grow them yourself and have access to your fruits of your labor is just amazing. Um, do you guys have fruit trees too, Kelly, or are you just growing your pro you, mainly your, your vegetables? And does anybody else have fruit trees? Good morning, Miss Angela. So I do have to watch my time today, so I apologize. I also apologize that I'm all over the place today. But um, And I wanted to let you guys know, I left those exercise links in the um, description below. Those standing exercises and simple exercises, I, I have been doing exercising my entire life. I love to work out, and I have never seen such quick results with any of the workouts I've ever done as I am with those workouts. So if those things matter to you, um, I'm just trying to re-strengthening, re-strengthen and retone my body um, because of the healing process I've been on for the last four years, um, and I'm also strengthening as a result of wanting to be able to be strong enough and healthy enough to help build our new home. Um, so those are down below also. Um, we want to have the seeds available. So do you, you're saving your seeds then um, as, as well, Kelly, right? And we do have a few fruit trees. Yes, apple, pear, purple, plum, and pie cherry plus elderberry. I knew that. Okay, but I'm glad I asked so that you could share. Yeah, you have a really great setup there. Um, being able to utilize your land in such a way is is what we should all be trying to attain. Um, one of the things we wanted to plant here was fruit trees. We did not get a chance to, but that will be one of the first things that we are planting um, in spring on our new parcel. So I highly encourage you guys to consider, and many of you have chimed in here, that you do grow your own food. But if you have not partaken, started, or are um, new to it, don't give up and, and delve in because there is so much reward in it. There is a lot of work to it. I would be lying if I said otherwise. But the rewards and the benefits to growing our own food is just tremendous. Um, we have, Tammy says we have a choke cherry tree and a whole line of bushes. Awesome. We will use some, um, but best kept for seed. Okay. I have saved seeds from quite a few of my um, plants over the years, and I'm really grateful to be able to do that. That's the, uh, one of the reasons why you want to be um, purchasing heirloom and non-GMO seeds so that you can utilize the seeds and, and keep yourself going. Uh, let's see here. Shelly says, every fall as I weed, I fill a garbage can full of weeds and in the winter we get lots of rain and I use the liquid in the spring compost tea in my gardens. I use the weeds for good. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, 
we need to work smarter and not harder and be able to utilize everything we can from our surroundings. Uh, we are going to do a Back to Eden Garden concept um, in our new, we were doing that here too, but um, I'm not sure if we'll have time to do the raised beds right off the bat. So I think that's what I'm going to try to focus on is doing that um, up there if I can this spring. Trying to build up our inventory for beans and grain crops. Smart. Shelly says, I only have raspberries. Sun has some fruit trees, but they do not know what they are. It will be great to figure out what they are. Yeah, and figuring out what they have. That's always fun when you get on a new property, just learning, taking the first year or two to learn everything that you have and what you've, what you've, you know, what your treasures are. Um, good morning, Mill. I didn't see you sneak on here. Hello, sister. Um, I could use back stretching exercises if you have anything like that you can share. Yeah, I actually will share something like that with you. Um, and and provide that for you uh, later on because I'm actually also working on my back. Um, one of the things that we do have and we were gifted is an inversion table, which is a fabulous stretch. Um, also, just hanging from a pole or a, a bar um, is uh, really, really good um, for just stretching everything. Um, also, uh, we'll plant apple and plum trees this spring. We're moving them to the new homestead. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Um, Kelly says, I have some tomato seeds that are 100 plus years old. Not that, not that old, kept from year to year, just passed down for over 100 years. That's fabulous. I love that. Yes, I had some of, uh, Melissa shared some of her seeds with me too. And that is just such an awesome, awesome thing. Uh, let's see here. Angela says apple, peach, pear, cherry, but just finally put them in the ground after they were in buckets for several years. Still have more in buckets. That's awesome though. I have a back to Eden medical book. It's awesome. I, I think I have the same book. I also have the, um, video from the back to Eden, um, garden plan. I'll have to put the link for that down below. If I'm not mistaken, it might be treyerwilderness.com slash back to Eden. You can check that. Uh, Robin, are you asking if the exercises are on, on our site? Um, no, they are not. I am watching, um, Tracy Campoli is who I've been, um, utilizing on YouTube. Um, her, her videos utilize your own um, resist, it's basically resistance training in a lot of cases. And, um, her videos are short, but grueling and not in a bad grueling way. Um, you have to try them. Um, there's, there's a couple links down below for some of the videos, but I'll, I'll share more, um, because they're, they're short, they're easy, you know, they're easy to fit into your schedule. Um, I like the standing ab work so much more. I mean, I have, I love ab work and I, I have been in a situation for over the last four years in different varying places in my healing that I couldn't be in certain positions. I couldn't do certain things. Um, God healed me of a hernia. So that helped. Um, but I'm finding these standing, uh, exercises to be just fabulous. And I don't know if I put the knee one in there or not. Yeah, I did. Her knee exercises are in there too. And I'll tell you what, they are, they're good. They're good. And just start out slow. Um, good morning, Miss Goodrin. So I need to jump off of here in a few minutes. I apologize, but today is a short one. And um, I want to share something with you. You know, you guys have watched us walk through quite the journey, but you've seen us You've seen us go through the good, the bad, and the ugly. You've seen us be in good places. You've seen us be in worn out places. But we've never lost our trust and our faith in God. And, and we've held on tight to that because that is something that is steadfast. And in everything we walk out, you know, we always, there's always going to be struggles. There's always going to be hard times. And so many right now I see are just going through some really, really tough stuff. And, and stuff that's pulling on the heartstrings. There's also been a lot of miracles worked. So I want to just encourage you guys to hang on. Take baby steps if you're in a rough spot. 
and, and to hold on tight and don't lose faith and trust in what God is doing behind the scenes because he's always working and he is truly, truly always there. You know, when you, there's variations to the footsteps in the sand, but you know, it starts out with two and then it ends up with one. And that's when, when Jesus is carrying us. And then you have these unusual prints in the sand. And that is where we gave up and there are butt cheeks in the sand. And regardless, God is present all the time. God is there waiting for us to ask for help. He's waiting for us to call out to him. He's waiting for us to commune with him. And that is an important part of the process is having that relationship and hanging on tight and knowing that he's not going to leave us or forsake us and that he will answer our prayers in his timing. They may not be what we were expecting, but they will truly be better than we could have ever imagined. And that might mean a completely different plan for us and for you. But it'll lead us into really amazing places because his plan for us is bigger and better than we could have ever imagined. And I just want to encourage you to remember that. Um, so I'm going to read this to you. He knows all about it. And you can uh, reference uh, Mark 12, 41 through 44 um, for your own reading today. But Psalms 147, 5, his understanding has no limits. And it's, it's, it's all truth. It's all promises that that he fulfills and that he answers for us. So we just need to have that relationship and call out to him. And it's that simple as just asking God to forgive our, our, our past sins, to remember when we do sin moving forward, that we ask for forgiveness and just continue to do the best we can do and to be um, a better us tomorrow. And just ask him to come into your heart and continue to just communicate with him no different than I am communicating with you. There is no need for special prayers. There's no need for a special place to, to do your praying. Just stop and talk. I talk to God all day long. It is just a constant, continual relationship and communion. And I love my fellowship with him. I love having him there and the more you grow in your relationship, you the more you will understand why I am able to do that, why I feel that is so important. So if you have further questions on that, don't hesitate reaching out to me at prayers at treyerwilderness.com. Kelly says, we all have so much peace going into this MRI. We truly know he has us. I'm so glad. That is just so important. That is exactly what I experienced when I was sitting on the gurney waiting to go in for my surgery four years ago. I never had more peace in my life than I did that day. Um, everybody else around me was a train wreck, but I had normally... When I had to do any kind of procedure like that, I get the nervous twitches. I feel like I'm percolating from the inside out and just uncontrollable, twi like just nervous twitches. And I was just so at peace. And I've been that way ever since. And it is an amazing feeling. It's an amazing feeling knowing also that regardless what you're walking out, that God has it. And when you get to that place and stuff happens that you didn't expect, you can very easily just brush it off and keep going because, well, then that's part of the plan. That's what he, he's doing something different. We aren't supposed to have that. He's doing something different. Um, and when you learn and you grow, it's not a learning thing as much as it is a growth thing. When you grow to that place where you are in total trust and faith and peace and comfort with whatever he's going to do, life is so different. Life is so comfortable. Even when you're going through the chaos, it's comfortable. It's it's knowing that he's got it and I don't have to work so hard anymore. And giving it to him and letting him have it and letting him keep it. That's where we all have a struggle. I did. I did for a long time. So, I'm and I'm really excited about that, Kelly. That is just so awesome. It gives me great joy to know that you guys are at peace. And I will be praying for you today. All right. I'm going to read this to you. Again, it is, um, he knows all about it. Finn, a Siamese fighting fish, lived at our house for two years. My young daughter would often bend down to talk with him after dropping food into his tank. 
When the topic of pets came up in kindergarten, she proudly claimed he, him as her own. Eventually, Finn passed away and my daughter was heartbroken. My mother advised me to listen closely to my daughter's feelings and tell her God knows all about it. I agreed that God knows everything, yet wondered how will that be comforting. Then it occurred to me that God isn't simply aware of the events in our lives. He compassionately sees into our souls and knows how they affect us. He understands that little things can feel like big things depending on our age, past wounds, or lack of resources. Jesus saw the real size of the widow's gift and heart as she dropped two coins into a temple collection box. He described what it meant for her as he said, This poor widow has put more into the treasury than all the others. She put in all she had to live on. And that's the Mark 12, 43 through 44. The widow kept quiet about her situation, but Jesus recognized that what others considered a tiny donation was a sacrifice to her. He sees our lives in the same way. May we find comfort in his limitless understanding. God, thank you for knowing me completely and loving me. Help me to feel your comfort when I consider your infinite knowledge of my life. You know, and, and this is the thing. Um, it says here he understands that little things can feel like big things depending on our age, past wounds, or lack of resources. You know, sometimes we are caught off guard by things that happen in our lives and it causes us to go into a panic. And when you hit that mode, one of the learning parts of my journey, I guess you could say, was that when I was in an anxious place, I needed to realize that wasn't something from God and that I needed to just let it go and give it over to him. There's so much in our lives we can't control and those are the things that we more often than not try to hang on to and try to control and try to fix. And we need to learn to just give it to him. And and learning, it's like I said, it's a growth growing in that and learning to give it to him, learning to understand our feelings are real, that maybe that little thing isn't as big as it feels right now, but that's how it feels. And we, and our feelings are something that we need to accept, but also learn how to healthily process and handle. And knowing that he is limitless and knowing that he will never walk away from us when we are suffering we need to call out to him though and we need to have that relationship with him and by having all of that and putting that all together we really end up in a very comforting and healthy and loving relationship with the father with papa angel says my husband has been feeling really bad physically he's so strong that it's hard to see him having trouble his job and our home projects are very physically demanding please pray for him i understand that I understand that, and you can count on that. Um, you know, sometimes God walks us through things like that. This just popped in my head, so I'm just going to share it. Um, you know, sometimes God leads us to places like that so that we slow down and take better care of ourselves and also rest in Him. Um, it's hard being in that place where we aren't able to do everything that we once were able to physically, and sometimes that's just temporary. And rest and resting in him is one of the greatest places of renewal yesterday this is kind of funny my we woke up to the dogs just being totally insane like they were stalking me and i let them out and we came back in and they just continued to stalk me and it was the weirdest thing they were sitting and staring at me they were putting their heads on my lap they just kept looking at me it was gorgeous outside and I knew what they wanted. I wasn't quite ready yet. I needed to kind of, my body needed to adjust and wake up. But we went, and we went for this really amazing long um, stroll. I can't say the W word or they would all jump up and I'd be in the same position as I was yesterday. But um, it was amazing. Um, we got out and I've been wanting to do this particular stroll for a while because it takes me through the woods rather than just walking on a lane. But with the old man, his hips are really bad and the snow being deep, it just makes it really hard. Then he can't walk and the stairs get very difficult for him. But yesterday was the perfect day and we did that. And it was just, I felt so stinking renewed. I can't tell you. I was giddy. I just couldn't wait. And I could have done it a second time, 
but he couldn't. So, but what was funny is they went from mauling me to death for probably an hour and a half, two hours before I was able to go to taking residence in different places on the floor and being in a coma for the remainder of the day. It was hysterical, but we all needed it. They know what I needed. And you know what? That's the thing. They are so in tune with us. Just imagine how in tune God is with us. He knows what we need. Sometimes we just need to listen to what he's sharing with us and be willing to rest in him. When we rest in him, we gain renewal, not just spiritual renewal, but physical renewal. I feel physical renewal when I go out there and I'm spending time in God's country. It's just amazing. I did some video footage and when you see the pictures I'll be sharing on Instagram in the next couple days, you'll understand. It's just his, his masterpieces are surrounding us everywhere. That includes the people in our lives, the animals in our lives, even the, the plants in our garden that are sprouting. I don't know about you, but there is such a great feeling to watch plants, seeds, turning into sprouts and, and growing and flourishing and, and then providing for us. It's just really amazing. I, I get great renewal being in my garden also. So that's another reason why I'm really looking forward to my gardening this year of whatever level and capacity I'm able to. Good morning, Ken. So guys, I just want to encourage you that if you are walking out difficult things to just rest in him and to continue to give it to him, regardless if it's things we can or cannot control, he wants us to ask. He wants us to give it to him. And he wants us to seek comfort and peace and joy and happiness from him. So if you are looking for those things in worldly things and you're not finding it, it's because you're looking in the wrong place. There is great gifts in, in communion and fellowship with God. And I, I can't tell you that enough because I am a walking example of God's grace, his miracles, and, and what is gained from growing, <clears throat> excuse me, growing in a relationship with him. Um, and I want to encourage that in you guys to keep growing in him, to keep seeking him, to keep gaining from um, his word and understanding that his word is where it's at, as well as the fellowship and communion with him. So guys, I've got to jump off of here because my day is full and I've got a lot of craziness. So thank you for joining me through my, my craziness, my chaos. Be sure to get the family garden plan. The link is down below. And be sure to sign up for the free gardening workshop with Melissa. That link is down below also. I believe it's organic gardening workshop. Um, but don't miss out on that. It is a great resource. The more we can educate ourselves um, with skills and knowledge, in both what we need to accomplish because we need to be proactive and active for God to work in our lives and um, also in seeking him. So I'm going to say a prayer for us and I'm so glad you guys took the time to join me. I hope you gained something from this high speed um, live video, but um, I'm just going to say a quick prayer for us. Papa, I just thank you for your love and mercies and grace. I thank you for this beautiful day that you're revealing sunshine to us. I thank you also that you've blessed me with the presence of all these people this morning for them taking the time out of their busy day, but also just love on them. Many of them have your needs. Be with Angela's husband and be with Craig, be with Courtney and Kelly today. Be with Shelly as well. Shelly needs your strength today. Just give her courage and strength. And uh, Lord, I just ask that you also wrap your loving arms around Sarah and uh, help her to get help and uh, be with Chad as he travels and just give him an amazing adventure and uh, thank you and praise you for what you've done in Mark's life and removing the uncurable cancer and also for helping uh, Robin to be migraine free. That's such a blessing and just be with Jill, help her body also and and be with Tammy, just give her comfort and peace and help her family to recover from all the sickness. And Lord, I just thank you for all that you're doing in our community, for your love, your mercy, and, and just helping each and every one of us through our day, helping us to grow in you and to learn from one another. Uh, may we uh, utilize 
your beautiful earth to grow a huge bounty this year for our families in, in whatever capacity we are able to do and, and just help us seek the knowledge and, and continue to grow in our knowledge and skills, but also in our knowledge and, and your word and in you. And just keep us all safe. Be with my mountain man. Just uh, renew him as well and help him. And be with my mountain boy also who was starting to get sick but praising you that that has passed. And just be with all the, those that are suffering right now with the coronavirus and the flu and the different illnesses. And, and just strengthen all of us as we walk our day to day. And we look forward to joining you again next week and in this environment but seek you every day. We love you and thank you for what you're going to do in our lives and ask this in your holy and precious name of Jesus. Amen. Okay, guys, thank you for joining me on the Warp Speed Live today. And I just wish you guys a fabulous day. I look forward to seeing you next week and look forward to um, sharing more with you. I will be on Instagram and if Facebook continues to be wonky, I will give you a heads up and links to join me next week on YouTube if we still continue to have struggles here because I don't I want it to be um, something we can all enjoy and that I am able to utilize properly so anyhow you guys have a fabulous day I love you all and God bless <laughs>